Maybe not everyone can relate, but for some of us, the struggle to stay motivated in wildlife photography is real. Whether we get bored of the craft or we simply get tired of the wildlife photography community, at times there can be an impulse to ditch it all and run away. Our community, unfortunately, tends to avoid this topic much altogether and pretend like it doesn't exist. But today, I have fellow wildlife photography YouTuber, Gunnar Dressler, on the podcast today to talk about why burnout in wildlife photography exists and how we can work through it better. Thanks for being on here, Gunnar. How are you doing? Fine. <laughs> No, I'm glad to be here. Uh, thanks for <laughs> inviting me. Yep. Yeah, it'll be an interesting conversation today. It'll be a it'll be a unique one, one that's not talked about too much. Um, and I'm excited to dive into it. Your adventures on YouTube are super cool. They've uh, inspired many, I know. And I've had the pleasure of being in contact with you and knowing you for a few months now. Um, if you guys didn't know, I'm actually hosting the first ever wildlife photography competition on September. 10th going live and it's actually already live for submissions and open and Gunnar is actually one of the judges on the competition so super excited about that we're giving away up to a thousand dollars in a single prize and we have 12 different prize groups that we're giving away so it's going to be super cool super exciting and make sure you check it out in the description below uh, if you haven't already so should be really great but before we dive into the points on how to avoid burnout in wildlife photography do you mind sharing with us a little bit about your personal experience with wildlife photography and possibly your struggle with burnout like talking about wildlife photography experience it's it's a bit like photography experience wise it goes a bit back uh, i mean i got my first camera like a real not real reflex camera but it, that sort of camera in 2015 and i wouldn't really consider myself taking it of course seriously pointing the camera every direction um mm. taking photos wherever i can like really opportunistic uh during my studies it became a bit complicated because i i always saw myself like i mostly shoot landscape photos I'm a landscape photographer, but super Dunning Kruger. Mm. Like I, I'm not good <laughs> at shooting landscape photos at all. Like what I thought back then is like, <laughs> it's hilarious that but, but everyone knows that <laughs> feeling. Like you think you know more than you actually can or however, but you're actually not that good. Mm. And after my studies, I moved to Christiansand and Christiansand is beautiful in its surroundings, but there is no like big mountains. Uh, crazy running rivers. Um, so I, I, I sit, mm. sat there and I'm like, <clears throat> yeah, what, what do I actually take photos of now? Um, and <clears throat> it took some time until 2020, really. So in 2019, I kind of suddenly just did photography and I felt these first feelings of what am I actually doing? Um, and does it feel good? Like, hmm. that's just like a small tickle of that feeling. Like what I've done for years suddenly doesn't give me what I thought it would give me in a way. And then in 2020, when hmm. I first heard about, like, I always knew there are Martins, but in Germany, there's something called like Stone Martin. That's like the typical ones that, yeah, mess up your car, uh, bite cables, that stuff. I didn't know about the Pine Martin <laughs> yeah. and someone just told me somewhere, I don't know, randomly, it's like, if you can photograph a Pine Martin, then you can nearly photograph anything else. And that just, that sat down like hmm. in my head. Yeah. Stuck with and you. Because it's such a challenge. I really started to get into like, I set cameras up. I think about the shot. I think about, uh, do I need some camouflage tent? Uh, like really getting more thought process into the topic. And that's, I guess, when I really ended up in wildlife photography for the first time, like in 2020. I have my share with burnout, <laughs> uh, but I'm not always thinking that mm -hmm. I'm the perfect example because I suffer from specific conditions nearly all my life that I remember of that make that more extreme. <clears throat> um, mm. So, I mean, I, I will just say it how it is because I I'll sometimes mention it on my channel. Um, I, I say, yeah, I have BPD, look it up if, yourself. I don't need your pity. Uh, what I think is more important is that people understand because BPD uh, is short for borderline mm. personality disorder um, that basically boils down to 
really unstable emotions, really unstable sense of yourself, what you're capable of, uh, mm. it can, can switch through the right trigger in two minutes. I can believe that I'm really filming a great scene right now and something can happen that completely turns my self-image around that I'm thinking, what am I actually doing here? I should leave. I like, leave the mountains, go home and ever forget about this. Hmm. Uh, and with that, of course, comes like uh, reoccurring depression, intermediate depression. Like, it, and I think these topics, especially depression, is uh, such a thing that's kind of common. That I also think it's really connected to burnout because if we suddenly lose the interest in doing something we love, of course, that does something with us emotionally. So for mm. me, it's always like really fast moving. I always have the feeling that I have to succeed. And if it takes too long, it can lead to great frustration. Um, it's, mm. yeah, I mean, that goes then like, what is enough? What is success? No, I think that's, that's real. Yeah. Finding, find, it's hard to not find so much worth in what you do and your hobby that uh, like, you become so dependent yeah. almost on it that like it, it actually winds up causing dissatisfaction because of how dependent you are on it. And I think that that's a hard balance in wildlife photography to achieve when you're not like being at a place where you care about it, you're excited about it, you love it, but not so much to where your self-worth is found in it almost to where you like it's hard when you feel like you're going to fall apart because of it. Um, I think something that's really interesting that you said um I know not everyone is wired this way, but it sounds like for you and I know for me as well, um, a huge motivating factor for me in wildlife photography is the idea that I can always improve and that I'm not perfect yet. Like I haven't gotten yeah, the perfect yeah, shot. Yeah. I haven't mm. gotten my best shot yet. And I'm always improving. I think that makes wildlife photography so exciting and thrilling to just constantly learn in. Um, does that fit very, it, it sounds like, you know, you kind of mentioned it. Does that fit a lot into your idea of like how to avoid burnout is by constantly striving for something? Um, I mean, if we uh, kind of want to go into that direction, I think you mentioned something that's very true. Uh, wildlife photography in itself <clears throat> is a really good hobby to not exactly directly burn out with because there's so much just to do. Mm. Um, first of all, we have thousands of species uh, that we can read up on, that we can look after, <laughs> that we can try to get that perfect shot that we don't get. So there is always really um, a great challenge. But on the other hand, which is really great these days is, and I'm not now talking necessarily about content creation or like filming for content creation. I don't, that's, that's something I learned, I think in the last month and that helped me is that I don't have to do everything for YouTube. Um, I, I mean, <laughs> I understood that already some time ago, but uh, you have to also understand and take that in and really practice it. Mm, yeah. Um, so with the new cameras that we have these days, it's so easy to record something for yourself. Um, there are some of my favorite videos that are not necessarily about wildlife because I, uh, people that watch me know that I'm not necessarily always go wildlife. There's a lot of other stuff I, from the beginning, really have in there. That's mm. the part wise field craft that's camping a lot because I think, mm -hmm. especially here in Norway, that's such a big part of the experience that you go out, you're in the field and Sometimes you have to do that because uh, if if I have a sunset and that that o'clock, I I rather be out there already because I <laughs> hate to go up early. Um, but um, there's just something you can add to it, and then it, then you can film. And these videos that show something of my memories, uh, my experiences, that's that's the most important thing when I look back that that I enjoy. Uh, it's not necessarily always the wildlife videos. Um, so what I'm saying is you can do so much more with the recent cameras, uh, which also helped me in a way. Let's say back then in 2019, I, I, I told you right now, uh, I normally would do landscape photography and then there is no landscape, which is not true. There is landscape, <laughs> but I was just a bad fo landscape photographer <laughs> because a good photographer would go and would it. find something, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, uh, what I'm saying is, what saved me to, to burn out from photography in that in that situation was that 
I understood. Now I could also go and just record videos. And that's, that's basically what I did. Like in 2019, my only real motivation was I want to do videos and I, I they were not about wildlife, but <laughs> I kind of ended up there, but I just filmed for the sake of filming. Yeah, those are some great stuff. I think that um, we all know that social media, too, can be really hard in comparing yourself to others. It can be con kind of like a constant struggle and battle against um, it. So I don't want to waste too much time talking about that because we all know the downsides of comparing yourself to social media. We all know all of that. But on the flip side, I think social media can be interesting as well, as it can be also a great source of motivation and that it provides a platform for you to share with others. Um, and I think of it in this mm. way. While wildlife photography as a hobby can be enjoyed alone, and by no means am I denying that, um, there's also a little bit of loneliness to it because of the nature of how individualistic it is. And I think that being able to share um, allows you to kind of partake in joy with others um, as they enjoy your work, you enjoy their work. And I think that's a really cool part kind of of... Um, what we have in terms of social media and being able to share. Would you say that being able to share your work, I know you touched on it a little bit in your last response, but being able to share your work affects your happiness very much in or your contentment with the hobby or does it not? Uh, I would say it did a lot. Mm. Um, I'm a bit burnt out with posting too regularly because everyone knows that if you do YouTube for some years, if the summer months are coming, the views are going to drop if you no, do your normal stuff. There is definitely going to be a drop for most people. And that's people like uh, Tom Vespi experienced that. I'm pretty sure there are people like Morton Hilmer experienced that. And YouTube has this great feature. You open up the studio and it pushes in your face. Your last video is the worst you ever made. And that, if I think back to two, three years, I had 100 subscribers. I, I would be glad if I get 100, 200 views. Now I get a video that's my worst video in the last 10 videos. And it says, yeah, well, uh, and I, I think to myself like, oh, God, what have I done wrong? But <laughs> in the end, there's still way more people watching it than, than years ago. So that shouldn't even count. Uh, so my response was, uh, for now, I just stay to uploading. Uh, a bit of thumbnail design. Oh, uh, that's how, that's kind of how we got to know each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you told me, you told me like, dude, you have to change something, and like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. By the way, that was I, great. Yeah, because that was so true. Yeah. Um, so I'm right now. I just post videos. I write the description. I work a bit on the thumbnail. Uh, not too much these days. In the summer, I just don't take it too seriously. And uh, I don't read my comments right now. I try to not be in YouTube studio as much as I can. Uh, so I basically just push out stuff and I read all those comments when fall is coming. And then I will be glad because most people are really friendly to me. They're really supportive and I love that. That's really nice. But it's just, it's, it's not a way to avoid the comments. It's just a way to avoid YouTube, right? Mm. The platform itself. And with Instagram, I think it's a bit harder if you take it too seriously, uh, because I communicate, for example, with you, we mostly communicate on Instagram, for example. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's my, like, internationally, that's where I contact people. If I write with people from Germany, it's, uh, or Norway, it's Messenger or WhatsApp. But that's where I generally have my photographer friends or uh, people, acquaintances that I know. And uh, that's why it's a bit hard to get the distance. But also there, I'm just uh, posting less. And if I post... Maybe I had the like count already in the beginning, uh, and I just try to ignore it as good as I can because uh, that doesn't help. Yeah. <laughs> and if someone wants to engage, if if someone thinks there's really something bad or good, then they will come up and write you. I think that's at least what I think. Mm. Um, so, and that's the parts you really need is feedback. How can I get better? Mm -hmm. uh, for example. Um, how, how can I improve? That's, I think that's when some people at least come to the table. Um, and that's the feedback and the critique I really need. Yeah. Of course, I'm happy if people support me. Like, of course. Um, 
but it's like trying to find the mindset and the setting in general where you can distance yourself a bit, not, not from necessarily completely the community, but um, the algorithm itself. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> because that's the one that no one ever understands. That's the thing you can't really influence too much. Of course, you can do certain things to make it better or more obvious, like uh, thumbnail, thinking a lot about thumbnails, um, how YouTube is just done. And uh, but that's as far as it goes, kind of. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, no one understands Instagram anymore. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough one. No, yeah, that's interesting you say that, though, too, because um, I've actually experienced, like, the biggest spike in views this summer so far that I've ever had on Instagram yeah. and Yeah, YouTube. you're doing, you're doing really good. But you're the only one. <laughs> yeah, no, me, I, I know one or two other guys that are experiencing a spike, yeah. too, but yeah. I think it's a hard okay. balance between, um, I think it's a hard balance between what you just said, distancing yourself. Um, and not getting too, like, it's just like what we were talking about earlier, not getting too heavily invested into it, but also being able to like, in part, take responsibility and like, try to figure out what can I improve? Like you mentioned as well. Um, and that's even, mm. like you said, that's how our, <laughs> that's how our relationship actually started. I, I, no one else really knows this, but just to share it in two sentences, um, you know, you, you had at one point put up like a post about just how you were feeling a little bit discouraged. This was like a year ago or something. Uh, with, you know, yeah. um, how the algorithm's been working for you or um, how your videos have been performing. And I, I just saw that. I was like, you know what? I don't know this dude. So hopefully he doesn't take this wrong. But like, <laughs> I, I, want, I want the best for him. I genuinely want the best for your channel. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to reach out to him. Just let him know, like, what I observe, what I think. And we started a relationship off that. And I think that's so cool because ever since then, our relationship has been super honest, super straightforward, super blunt. But at the same time, very caring and very encouraging of each other. Um, and so I, I love that. Oh, the first time I was like, oh, my God, what is he telling me now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This guy, who does this guy think he is? <laughs> no. not, not necessarily extremely like that. But I was that's like the typical first response, like, what? Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. it was really like and then you think for five minutes about it and you realize like, yeah, he actually got a point there and I don't spend nearly as much time as i should maybe on thumbnails <laughs> i'm always doing thumbnails that are like for me mm, yeah but that's a trick like right so um <laughs> it's funny but like gl so glad you did that uh, that, that that's exactly what i mean if you really uh, if there's really someone that cares maybe about it thinks or knows how to improve you he might actually reach out. Yeah. And that's what you did. Yeah. And that's the, the, while I was kind of trying to, like, I was frustrated and I, then I tried to ignore it. And then actually someone comes and has something important to say. Yeah. Right. Like a lot, a lot of people are writing like, and that's super kind there, right? Like you're really good. You should go on with this. Um, but they, uh, because they are supporting your stuff, they maybe don't see the problems with it. Mm. Or it doesn't mean that you didn't want to support me, but you wanted to support me by helping me uh, in a really effective way out of position that you also have experience with the topic, mm. right? It's not, not everyone watching is, of course, doing yeah. their own YouTube channel. So how <laughs> should they know how to help me, right? So it kind of had to be someone that's sitting in a kind of similar situation. Mm. And that can actually give you the feedback that you were looking for because things uh, like right now, it's maybe a bit stupid again. I'm not spending enough time on thumbnails, but that time after you reached out to me, I had a really good time on YouTube, mm. like considerably numbers wise. It's not like I spent too much thought on it, but it was going quite well last fall and winter. Uh, and I still can't really complain right now. I'm fine. Yeah, that's some great stuff. Um, I think one of the other challenging perceptions is that when we smack the label of wildlife photographer on ourselves, we suddenly kind of feel as if we have to push ourselves to kind of unrealistic expectations to fulfill our roles as wildlife photographers, quote unquote. Um, for example, even for me, like, I feel like now that like, I'm starting to slowly build a career in wildlife photography, it feels like sometimes I have to like, I feel the pressure of like, oh, I'm not going out like five times a week, like some of these other wildlife photographers, like, am I even really a wildlife photographer? 
And I feel like I almost have to push myself to like do these things that I actually don't, I actually don't want to be out five times a week personally. Like that's not, that's not the type of wildlife photographer I want to be. I'd rather be really intentional, go out twice, maybe three times a week at most. Um, and that's just who I am um, and how I enjoy wildlife photography. So I think it's really uh, interesting how we kind of feel a lot of pressures as wildlife photographers when we smack that label on ourselves to push ourselves too hard. You were kind of talking about how as a YouTube creator, you felt like you had to like, you know, just constantly be putting things out and you're kind of learning like maybe not everything has to be about YouTube. Like I can still enjoy wildlife photography without YouTube. So there's one thing that you say now is like you don't have to go out that often. Um to effectively effectively shoot no um maybe not necessarily no uh because wildlife photography always feels like to me like it's five to ten percent photography <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is research research and research mm. um yep. there is uh um, b before I seriously go out and now, now maybe I should have been more out. I have this new location here where I live and there's a Pine Martin. Um, uh, I should have been more out, but I had other things going on and there will be always too many projects to do. <laughs> um, 1000 wildlife projects. Um, and then I sometimes focus on the projects that I know will bring me more success because I'm been hunting like, uh, uh, passionately, but like a maniac for the Pine Martin for the last couple of years. Mm. And I know that they're in this forest and I have the right season right now, but it's mostly raining in Trondheim. So uh, really dark days sometimes. So I, I take that into account and I'm like, maybe it won't happen right now. So I take a project on me, which is which will bring more success. That's just something you understand at least after some years. But what yeah. you say is like that putting that stamp on like, I'm a wildlife photographer. <laughs> uh, of course, we often then directly go into a direction and are like, yeah, but am I really like, am I like Morton Hilma? Of course I'm not. Um, <laughs> but uh, then there's also something to understand. Like, while I guess for you, you're a bit more longer than I'm in wildlife photography, but also just for me, it's just like, uh, I, I don't try to paint a picture at least not anymore. In 2019, I was a bit like too much Dunning Kruger going out there talking like I understand something. And mm. gladly, most of these videos are long gone by now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but since 2020 and since I set my first wildlife cameras up, I was really like showing like, I have no clue what I'm doing here <laughs> and you're in on the trip. Yeah. And if you like it, together. You, you join and you learn with me because <laughs> I'm not necessarily someone like, of course, I have un I understood the basics of how photography works. And then I learned a lot in 2018. But uh, a lot of the research for wildlife photography was really new to me. So people are basically just with me learning stuff, which mm. is the reason why I don't really do tips videos, which is also I can't do it. I don't have the... I don't have the right type to bring it over. For me, it's just like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I want to do more like storytelling maybe because I see that I can do it yeah. and that I maybe also part-wise enjoy doing it, though I don't like maybe YouTube because it favors that seemingly a bit, is pushing me into that direction, but I'm open to it. I, I like what you're sharing there. And uh, just to encourage you some too, I think that it's incredibly impressive thinking about that you've only been really photographing wildlife since 2020. Um, you already have done so well, like you've already created some amazing stuff. Um, and I think the fact of you being a photographer long before that probably plays largely into how, how you transitioned over into that because your aesthetic and your setups are, are great a lot of times. And you have maybe a lot of learning on the research end maybe to do as you're talking about um, more in understanding the wildlife, but you have a great, great totally. look and great aesthetic. So I love it. Um, but yeah, those for, are great things that you shared. <laughs> for, for someone that studied biology, I'm really bad at birds. <laughs> um, understanding that I should do research. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm like, I, sometimes I don't understand how I'm so ignorant, but there is the point. Mm. I had burnout with my studies as well. Mm. 
I kept that so at a distance. I was done with my masters and it was out of my life. Mm. Because that that's maybe what I want to tell some people. If you go out, you should be careful that you don't set your hopes too high. I have many people asking me for Q and A's or something that they are uh, asking me, how do you deal with frustration going out and not seeing anything? Mm. And, and that's already where I come to a point where people uh, kind of have the hope or to, the hope to see an animal, the hope to talk, photograph an animal. And uh, they kind of get past the point of enjoying being outside. Mm. And so I think it's uh, important if I go out to set a goal that's reasonable mm. and that's safe. Because then from there, it can only go up. Mm. Like, uh, uh, I have a hide here in the woods. Uh, I have, uh, not really, I have just a camel, camouflage tent is up. And I know there's always squirrels. So mm. if I go out there, I don't expect to get a pine marten. <laughs> right? I know that the pine marten sometimes comes around. Um, and that would be my greatest chance of ever photo photographing a pine marten. Yeah. And if it happens, I'm, I, I, I just, yeah, I'm, uh, then I would be so happy. But if I go out into that camouflage tent, I say to myself, yeah, well, my goal is I see a squirrel. And I get a decent squirrel photo. If mm. it's anything better than that, oh my god, I will be so happy. Uh, <laughs> let's just like go out with realistic expectations, let's say. Um, mm. Because most of all, and that's of course not on YouTube, while I try to show sometimes like I go out, most of the times people see that I see animals or they see it on the wildlife cameras or they see a photograph like a bit on the run. Um, uh, but those are maybe not the most scenic photos, but that's just to people letting people understand. Yes, it's not like that. You will spend a lot of time not seeing anything. And if mm. you let wrong expectations lead you to frustration, it will not help your passion for wildlife photography. Mm. I, I told you before on another video in uh, for Bird Burger, it was just a small video in the beginning, that um, I lack really... Um, yeah, patience. Mm. Uh, I know that frustration yeah. too well. Uh, I, I've dealt with that. I do it for two years. I have a really fast living brain that wants success, that wants to succeed, get better mm. all the time. Um, like I explained before. And uh, mostly I still lack the the patience for it the last couple of years. That's something you really have to learn to sit there mm. And not yep. like pull your phone out at every opportunity and <laughs> stare at that because then you miss the pine martin. Yeah. You will miss it because the pine martin is super quiet. It will be gone yeah. before you have put your phone down. So that's something yep. you really have to learn. I sat out there, like I told you back then, I sit out there, I'm waiting for badgers, but what I'm doing 50% of the time is staring at my phone. <laughs> yeah. And I, uh, I'm not sure if it came over, like if people understood that in that, in, in my short series about that, there was a situation, I missed the badger. Mm. Like I, I saw it, but it was already gone. Mm. <laughs> it, was just, yeah. like, it was maybe already also too dark. That's why I was a bit like, yeah, it doesn't really matter anymore. I just want to see if they come out, but yeah. I would have also missed my opportunity in a way. It's like, yeah. can't say it for hundred percent, but, uh, patience is something you really have to learn. I said also perseverance is really important to get yeah, you there. I remember that. Um, uh, and I will still stand by that. But of course, the best is perseverance and patience uh, and goals that make sense. Yeah, I uh, with in my uh, most recent video that I released on my main channel, um, you were kind of talking about setting goals. And I think it's not even that you necessarily can't have a high goal, but I think it's more yeah. that when you don't reach that high goal, what do you do with yourself? Do you f feel like your whole trip has gone to waste or do you feel like you've still got something worth capturing? You know, on my uh, last most recent video on my main channel, um, I've been trying to capture this bird called a mountain quail um, for gosh, three, four oh, summers so now in a row and amazing bird. And I, I get to hear them all the time, rarely get to see them. And it's even harder to photograph <laughs> them, right? 
And that's <laughs> they've been my goal. That's been my goal every time I go up to the mountains these yeah. last four summers. But I still, even in the last video, I got better photos than before, but still not great photos, right? Um, so for me, it's still like it, it's still like a goal that drives me, and I still get excited about yeah. this goal, and I love it. But after those days, like after that day where I had that encounter that I show in the video, I had to like on my walk back, I had to breathe and be like, okay, this is a beautiful place that I have a privilege of getting to be in. And I got to enjoy my day. I got to see that fox sparrow, which resulted in amazing photos, you know? Um, and so for me, I had to like reframe after I didn't quite meet that expectation, had to kind of reframe, be like, okay, um, what uh what yeah how can i readjust my happiness and what it's reliant <laughs> yeah, yeah, on yeah, in this yeah. moment so i love what you're sharing i think that those are some super valuable things so but yeah thanks for being on here i really enjoyed getting to talk with you about burnout and just how hopefully this is helpful to others and them um kind of learning about how they can address this own kind of i guess source of happiness or joy or contentment in the hobby and i think you shared some really valuable stuff so thanks for coming on Thank you for inviting me over. I really enjoyed this. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Gunnar. Thanks, you guys, for watching. If you want to learn more about the first ever wildlife photography photo competition on YouTube that we are hosting, check out the website in the description below of the video or the end screen here. We are giving away tons of prizes, and the competition will be judged live in an incredibly exciting YouTube live here on Bird Burger, September 10th. Take some time to check out Gruner Dressler's YouTube channel in the description below, as well as he has some amazing content and stories that he shares. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.